episode 70. Coming at you from the mid Midwest. Welcome to Life's Learning Curve. I'm your host and former educator and media producer, Paul Hart. Hey, hey, tell me a story. What is Life's Learning Curve? Well, we're a storytelling podcast where we tell stories of people and places and events and things that have happened in our lives that have changed us in some way. And this goes on throughout our entire lives. Matter of fact, it happens to me even every day right now for me. All for the purpose of becoming a better us. We need to keep working on that. All of us. Me too. On this episode, I'm going to retell a true story about my college buddy who became a dentist in beautiful Savannah, Georgia, where he created a thriving business and became this regionally famous dentist for his work. And on today's show, you're going to hear how he was the setup for an incredible police sting, or a sling as they put it. So let's go. Sebastian. Here we go. Life's Learning Curve. I'm Paul Hart. Episode, The Savannah Sling. Stand by. In undergrad college here in the mid-Midwest, we played pickup football games together on the quad. I'd pass that football no matter how poorly or how well I threw that ball. He always seemed to catch it and run it in for a touchdown. We'd become friends based on our love for sports, our love for music, His name was Ty, Ty Hagen, T-Y-E. And being the name of the Chevy Chase character in Caddyshack, I had never heard of this name prior. (laughs) A Savannah, Georgia native, Ty attended college in the Midwest, and he was a strong student. Then after medical school, he became a dentist, a good one, and he would become the temporary crown king of our region. People came from miles around just to have Dr. Ty make a temporary crown on like a number 18 molar. Just like an artist, his temp crowns were taut and functional. Why make such a big deal about a crown on a tooth? It was that crown that saved Dr. Ty Hagen's life one night. But uh, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Our story begins tonight with Ty Hagen's hometown, Savannah, Georgia. Many generations of Ty's family called this southern showpiece their home, with a family who was heavily embedded in law enforcement, his aunt, his uncle, his own father currently served as sergeant and watch commander. They kept the peace in town, safe and serene. Savannah, Georgia, they boasted tree-lined streets, still do, filled with antebellum buildings and historic charm, a laid-back southern lifestyle, and colorful, natural landscapes. Most of all, and as I already said, his family. They kept the peace in Savannah, Georgia. To protect and serve, and they did. Ty felt the need to venture out into other people's mouths. (laughs) Dentistry. Dentistry, also known as dental medicine, oral medicine, teeth, gums, mouth, diagnosis, prevention, management, and treatment of diseases, disorders, and arrangement of the teeth. While in dental school, Ty returned to my area, the mid-Midwest, and just hang out for a few days with some of his old college buddies. We had moved on from college, but it was nice to get together. I was one of those guys, and it was great to know Ty still carried his very dry sense of humor. Hey, how are you all doing? I remember saying to him, So what's new, Ty? Uh, how's med school? Med school? His comical yet serious stare focused my attention for a second. Giddy up. After a few seconds, Ty responded with, Paul, did I ever tell you about oral mucosa? <laughs> what? what? Oral mucosa? Well, let me tell you, oral mucosa, you don't want that. That's just something that... The dental practice. At last, my friend Dr. Ty Hagen was at the point in his young career where it was time to put some of the money where his mouths would be. 
Ty returned to Savannah, Georgia, as to purchase an existing well-priced dental practice located in the upscale Roden neighborhood. It was great to be home again with family, he felt. They would be nearby. As a matter of fact, it was Ty's police sergeant father who recommended the available business. He saw it was open for purchase. The office, the dental office, sat comfortably in one of Savannah's finest neighborhoods. Why had this business not been successful? Well, that was a mystery to young Dr. Ty. Ty's assumption was that possibly the previous dentist had just not been too highly motivated. However, Ty knew the locals. Good people. He knew that if he could flip this existing dental office and bring in new clients, ones that maybe knew and respected his family, he could really grow this practice. And after that, Building his dental business would uh, hopefully be catapulted by his reputation for his talent, for his artistry, creating these temporary crowns. Office Space C. Hours after completing his paperwork and all the other legalities, Dr. Ty Hagen motored to the Roden neighborhood to see his newly purchased dental practice up close. Entering the ample parking lot, Dr. Ty recognized the sultry southern charm of the very cultured appearing strip mall. (laughs) Large oaks framed the three office complex and bright yellow striping adorned the fresh black top parking area. Clean, fresh, nice. But as Dr. Ty walked and approached the front door of 502 Roden, office space C, He noticed something with each step. He saw more and more trash, more wrappers, but just by this business. Old cigarettes, and and just outside the entrance of his newly purchased dental office, laid a used syringe. Now standing in the small lobby of his very own dental clinic, it was hard not to notice the plain colors, the lack of floor tiles places, and the weathered receptionist who was smoking and laser focused on this tiny tube TV which illuminated the room in glorious black and white oh the receptionist a nameplate boasted the name Sally Joe receptionist Sally Joe looked every year of a world weary 38 years old frizzy hair and Wearing what looked like pajama tops and yoga pants, Sally Jo never even looked up from the small rabbit ear TV. Apparently a live broadcast was on of a helicopter chase over Interstate 95 nearby. And it kept her distracted. And Dr. Ty said, Hello. No response. Hello, Sally. Sally Jo. Uh, Sally, I need your attention. No response. Sally Jo never even looked up from the small rabbit-eared TV she was watching. I'm your new boss, your new owner of here. I'm Dr. Ty Hagen. I phoned you. I was coming here. This business, Sally, hey, this business is mine. No reply. In one swift move, Dr. Ty snatched the small TV off the counter, yanking the power cord right out of the wall outlet. In just a few steps, he exited the small business rear door. And that small TV? It was launched and landed in a dumpster on back. The old tube TV shattered as it hit the floor of the dumpster. Feeling vindicated... Yet calm, Dr. Ty re-entered the dental office and Sally Jo slowly drawled. Now, who are you now? The Rogue Bill. Now, sand cigarettes, no cigarettes. Sally Jo did continue as a receptionist after her role and duties were explained to her by Dr. Ty, and he still kept an eye on her as she convinced him of her skills and knowledge of the job. Uh, I'm a savant. As the building was fitted with new equipment, fresh coats of paint and flooring, the once dirty stained walls were now clean. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ty had to come up with a catchy name for this business, so he went to Sally and said, Sally Joe? 
Yes? I've been brainstorming some names for the business, something catchy, creative, you know, different from the rest. Yes? So, I want to run a few names by you. Tell me if you like any of these. Sally? Yes, oh, okay. Here's one. The filling station. Uh-huh. Plaque to the future. Plaque. P-L-A-Q-U-E. Plaque to the future. Mmm. Uh, Dr. Ty's rinse and spit. Uh-huh. Well, okay then. Well, how about you? Uh, any ideas for a business name from you? Sally seemed, for once, excited. Hearing a vague excitement in her voice, she said, Well, I, I got just one, just one, Hagen Dental. The way I see it, nobody else is using that one. Frustrated, Dr. Ty threw up his hands and said, Sally Joe, that's fine. Let's use that one. It was an inspired idea. Growing the business. Welcome to Hagen Dental. I'm Sally Joe. What y'all need? As Dr. Ty's business slowly grew, he was careful to monitor clients, payments, and outgoing bills as well. As a startup, all incoming and outgoing monies were closely followed. After the second month, Dr. Ty noticed there was a $1,500 bill he had paid that bill. And it was from a company calling themselves Cathartic Cure. And their return address was to someone named Wiley Shambo. The cardboard box came monthly, and as hard as he tried, Dr. Ty could not find what product was being sent to his practice or justify that expense. Sally Joe, what is this, this bill? What are we paying for here? Oh, honey. Uh, Sally, call me doctor. Oh, honey doctor. I know exactly what this is. It's a bill. Now, Dr. Ty knew he would not get any better answer from Sally Joe on this one. So he walked out back once again to the dumpster, which apparently has most of the answers here. He walked out back and he found an empty 9 by 9 inch box. It had already been opened and now this empty box had been couriered and signed for by Sally Joe. The return address? Wiley Shambo at Cathartic Care. Ty said to himself, Huh. So she did get it. Ty would keep a watchful eye on the next delivery, but as it turned out, Dr. Ty was not the only one watching all this. The phone call. Weeks passed, and one afternoon, late in the day, Ty just completed creating what he felt was the perfect temporary crown. He carefully put his tools away, and Sally Joe entered the dental area. Ty? Sally, uh, call me doctor or Dr. Ty. Okay. Ty, doctor. Urgent call on line one. Sally, we only have one phone line. Right. Call on line one. The only phone line. Hello, Dr. Ty Hagen. Ty? Ty? Dad, great to hear from you. What's up? Ty, now just keep your voice down a bit. Why, Dad? What? What's going on? I'm calling in the capacity of the police department today, Ty. Oh, listen, okay. something's up and it's not good. It might not be good for you. Yeah, you yeah. just got word from the drug and narcotics branch of the federal government. And you're not supposed to know this, but I have to tell you for your safety. The DEA? Your former tenant, the dentist that was there before you, apparently he was running drugs out of that office. Yeah. Methamphetamines and cocaine. 
Oh my gosh, Dad. That's, uh, that's awful. They have a hunch your secretary, Sally Joe, still might be in on it as well. Really? Whoa. Dad, uh, what do you recommend I do? Well, son, uh, play it nice and easy every day until the next box is delivered. Now, the box is going to be labeled Cathartic Care. Have you seen any of those boxes in your first two months? Sure have, Dad. I had a hunch myself something might be up. Well, listen, the feds have undercover personnel in place. Listen to this. We have just found out there's going to be a delivery tomorrow. One box. Savannah police are on the standby to assist as well. Business as usual, Ty. Just let us do the rest. Okay, got it. Wow, Dan, a sting operation right at my dental practice. <laughs> uh, more like feds help us and we local cops help them. It's We hold each other up. Less like a sting and more like a, a sling, you know, holding things up, I guess. <laughs> That night, Ty could hardly sleep. Uneasy, tense, he worried about the next day. He didn't know whether there'd be problems or not, but he felt the adrenaline his dad had always seemed to exude. He realized that was why he did not go into law enforcement for himself. Too much stress, too high stress and unpredictable at times. It eats up your insides. The day of the sting. The next day at Hagen Dental, the sameness of daily routine filled the office. With no patients coming in till noon, Dr. Tai created one of three temporary crowns at his design station suite. Yet, his mind wandered, but his nerves got the better of him. And without thinking, he carelessly shoved the fine metal instruments in unfinished crown tip into the upper pocket of his pure white lab coat. It just couldn't work. Dr. Ty cautiously moved over to the large window next to dental chair one. He scanned the exterior parking lot or streets for any possible undercover federal agents. Dr. Ty saw traffic and an occasional worker walking to work and a six-year-old manning a lemonade stand just outside the perimeters of the office complex. No agents. It was early in the day still when the courier truck arrived and a delivery person entered Hagen Dental carrying a 9 by 9 box. Package, Sally Joe. Through that large darkened window, Dr. Ty observed as Sally Joe signed for that delivery and Sally Joe carefully moved it below the reception counter. The courier climbed into his truck and off he went, motored away. Nothing had happened. Wow, nothing. Well, that was it, Dr. Ty Hagen thought. A missed opportunity by the feds. Then it happened. Sally Jo slowly took the box and casually exited the office, and she waved to someone in the business next door to the dental office. She opened the trunk of her brown, large-wheeled vehicle and placed this box inside the trunk. And Sally then opened that box once in the truck to see if its contents were there. And apparently she was content with the contents. After careful examination, that box, which was full of methamphetamines and cocaine, was secure. Sally Jo slammed the trunk of the car, and there was an immediate response. Seemingly from out of nowhere, Dr. Ty Hagen could not believe his eyes as a mass undercover law presence converged on Sally Joe. He saw and he heard a postal worker face her and shout, Freeze! Sally Joe did not freeze, but she reached in her pocket for something. But by then, the mom from the lemonade stand pulled a weapon. She identified herself as a law officer and she raced over and immediately took down Sally. Down she went. A window washer as well. A dog walker surrounded Sally Joe. These were all Fed agents that got in disguise. Agents were everywhere. Dr. Ty had to get a closer look, he thought, and he emerged from the dental office but kept his distance. To himself, he moaned, Oh, Sally, why? She's got a gun. Surprised, and Sally spun 
toward Dr. Ty for some reason, and the sound of a pistol firing cracked the air, and with that, a streets and sanitation worker, a sewer guy, literally crawled out of an open manhole, really, and, and subdued the outnumbered receptionist. These were highly trained and very effective undercover agents. It was then... Once handcuffed, Sally Jo exuded probably more energy than ever seen at Hagen Dental Office. She struggled and she bit and she cursed the agents. Sally Jo was escorted to the backseat of a waiting patrol car, but not before repeatedly screaming her husband's name. Poochie! 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 Now, Poochie, who, as it turns out, was the other drug trafficker, and he was inside the business next door, next to Hagen Dental. Situation resolved. Or was it? Just seconds passed as the law enforcement agents spotted Dr. Tai. See, about 90 seconds earlier, Dr. Tai had felt the concussion on his chest from Sally's pistol, and he fell backward onto the parking lot asphalt. He's hit. Dr. Ty. Where's the blood? Yeah. Internal? I don't see anything. Doc, you okay? Stay still. Paramedics are a block away. Oh, no. A hole in his pure white lab coat gave the precise entry point location of that bullet. Right at the heart. Get up, son. I said get up, boy. Dad? Dad? Ty, I've seen this before, Ty. And listen, whatever is in your upper pocket deflected that bullet. Matter of fact, that bullet is on the ground just next to you. So, so my temp crown? My instruments, my temporary crown I was making, deflected the bullet away from me? That was impossible. No, son, it didn't even enter your body. Oh, Dad. The crown, oh, look at it's God. pulverized, Dad. It's unusable now. You're very lucky, son. Your temporary crown saved your life. Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. my gosh. This is going to make a great story at the dental convention next year. Wow. Uh, Dr. Todd's okay? Hey, Dad, I'm a little bruised. Can you give me a hand here and help me up? Nope. I can't always do everything for you, son. you got to get up yourself. Was Ty brought up on charges? After all, his business had paid for the illegal drugs through Sally Joe, even though he didn't know about it. A jury found that only Sally Joe and her husband Pumar Poochie had solicited illegal drugs and had them couriered to Hagen Dental Office, where she worked and then moved those illegal drugs to her own personal vehicle. Dr. Ty Hagen was cleared. However, Cathartic Care and Wiley Shambo, they're still out there, on the run. But what was really most important was that Dr. Ty Hagen was alive. So what's our outcome here? What did we learn? What did Ty learn? Well, as engaged and motivated we all were to begin our careers when we were so very young back in the day, most of us held tight to our innocence. It's our youth. It's what we knew. The innocence of youth and doing the right thing. Well, Ty did that. We all kind of do that still. But Ty had to turn in his secretary. He just did. It was the right thing to do. And Ty got shot in the process. But he made it. You know, doing the right thing can be hard. Author C.S. Lewis once wrote, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one else is watching. 
I think I'll leave it right there. <laughs> For Life's Learning Curve, I'm Paul Hart. Subscribe to Life's Learning Curve at lifeslearningcurve.org and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Podchaser. Season 4, Episode 70, The Savannah Sling of Life's Learning Curve Podcast was put together by Producer Sebastian T. Dog, Executive Producer Paul Hart, Technical Director Rich Zosin, Editor Paul Richards, Audio and Sound Riley Hart, Production Manager Victor Musch, Studio Equipment Manager Don Compton. Hey, find us on Facebook and listen to us, well, just about everywhere podcasts are heard these days. And visit our website, lifeslearningcurve.org. And subscribe, read a blog, or shoot us an email. We're always glad to hear from you. This episode has imaginative voice recreations to protect the privacy of others. Some names have been changed, and voices and characters conflated. Episode 70, The Savannah Sling. I'm Paul Hart, and we will be back soon with more from Life's Learning Curve.